Now, if you accuracy of founding and penetration depth, this one you know, uh, allow against UIS, against SLS. Uh. Very important, very important. Define what is the competence short term for the total termination failure. We call the church street failure. The competence short term was defined as SPT 100. And yet, and, and they won 5 meters into SPT 100. And yet, they all didn't achieve. 66 out of 73 power did not achieve 5 meters. I don't know why. Okay? I don't know why. Probably along the way, they have found a more competent short term that allow them to use a shorter socketing length. Mean, for example, you use SPT 100 original, then actually on site is all SPT 100. So that's how you get it. I haven't asked my favorite question. How do you confirm SPTN on site? Okay, from the ball, from the ball hole, from the actual boring hole. Later, uh, later we'll check. Now, how do you determine? Yes, my favorite question. This one I must ask. Ask who? Uh? Hmm. Who want to attend? My, okay, let me raise this question. Let's say today the designer say, hey, my power must stop in SPT 100. So today, the contractor happily uh, boring, boring on the side. And your design say the SPT 100 will encounter at 30 meter below ground. So when they reach 30 meter below ground, they say, hey, this is SPT 100. Somebody have to confirm this is SPT 100. How do they confirm whether this is SPT 100 or 99, 79, 85? How do they confirm? I want to ask. Okay, I think this is my RTO. Mark Edward Fastino. Mark, are you there? Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Are you my RTO? No, no. Oh, okay, sorry. You, you, you're from Philippines, right? Yeah. Where are you working now? Um, CPG. No, has designer? I uh, know, yeah, on site. On site, right? You are IERTO, right? Yeah. Okay, you tell me now. My favorite question, I, now uh, I'm the talent contractor. I say, hey, mom, come, please confirm whether the SPD 100 because I want to calculate the five meter from now on. How do you check? And this location is not near to any borehole. Huh? Oh, uh -huh. How do you check? No idea. No idea. <laughs> no idea, and you do site investigation. If I ask you, like, I ask you, you know, hey, which project you don't work in the, hey, you work in the state court project, no? no, right? Usually, I just refer to the ball log to confirm the depth. Yeah, correct, correct. You refer to the ball log, it's not wrong, but I'm telling you, your ball log cannot be every ball power, you have a ball hole, right? This, this particular power is not near to any of the borehole on site. How do you confirm? Whether it's SPT 100 or not? You don't know the answer, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. You admit you don't know is better than you think you know. Okay, very good. Let me ask another guy. This one very important. Go get po. Mr. Go. Go get po. Are you here? No. Uh, who else? John Lim. John Lim, are you here? What? Or want to cannot answer this question? Who want to answer this question? Hey, this is a very important question, you know. Uh, hi. Yeah, I'm, you I'm Min Win. I'm an undergrad from uh, NUS. You are Min Win. Yeah, Min Win, is it? Yeah. Okay, good. How uh, do you right, answer? Uh, I'll just, I, I, I'm not sure, but I'll just use my limited knowledge to try. No uh, problem, you try. Is it like you just do a, a SPT test? Like, Sorry? Like, you, like from, like, uh, in my this. I learned how to do SPT like at the lab. So like yes. my my 
uh, my answer would be like you just do the SPT test on site to determine whether it's like the correct SPT. Why like that every go home I need to do SPT eh? Uh, like but but like you say, oh like those with borehole then no need to do ma. This one don't have borehole. That's why you do. Your site got one hundred ballpark, only got five borehole. So how many bo How many additional site? How many borehole you want to do? How many SPT tests you want to do? Uh, I don't know. I this is uh my guess ah. Uh. Mm. But you are very close. Good attempt. Good attempt. In fact ah, uh, in the market. I'm the first one to tell people to use this. There's this thing called a con, uh, handheld penetrator. Have you heard of this? Uh, co penetrometer, yes. Right? Who answered yeah. that question? Who, who, who was talking just now? Hand pocket penetrometer. Yes, hand pocket, yeah, hand pocket penetrometer. Yeah. And then we just press the, the value in kg bar cm square and then go back to the uh, CU. Hey, can, you, can you introduce yourself? I, I'm very scared that somebody's suddenly talking like that. You, who are you? Uh, my name is Miu, Miu Dura. I'm studying in the MSc. You are working already, right, Miu? Yes. Okay, so you are Jolo you from Myanmar, right? Yes. You Georgia train, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so usually Burmese people will know. Okay? Georgians will know. This hand pocket penetrometer uh, can actually easily correlate to SPTN. Alright. And it can go as high to measure up to as now uh, the first version only up to SPT 75, but now it can measure up to SPT 100 already. And you will ask me, hey, if you take out the sample, uh, the SPT, the soil, uh, all this stuff, no, how can you be sure it's 100? I can assure you, you can. Okay? Because in SPT 100 soil, uh, you take out the, you take out the, the, how do I call that, the, the during, the during bucket, the during bucket, what you take out? Of course, you don't take those, you already see it's already disturbed. You must take those actually inside the bulk sample that actually relatively stiff one. Okay, actually you can. Uh. Very, very important. Uh. Please remember this. If you do IRTO, even you don't become an IRTO, even you, next time you become P, do you know that you are the supervision? You are the ultimate person who supervises this thing? And if you're telling me you don't know, uh, how to determine on site, then if you, you yourself don't know, you expect the site people to know. This is very interesting. Uh. I'm telling you, this is what I feel very absurd about the industry now. now uh. Very absurd about industry. And I foresee, uh, and I foresee, we, we will have foundation failure very, very soon. Okay, very soon. That's why I want to do this kind of seminar. Okay, now, good, uh, good answer. You are, sorry, I, meal, meal, right? Meal, okay, yes. good. Now, next thing, review the ground condition, blah, 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 the test result. Now, do you know that the construction method will determine the performance of ballpark? In the EC, in the EC2, uh, when you, okay, in Singapore, we, we don't ever use permanent casing one. Uh. Nobody left in the casing, unless for certain special reason for debonding, we use permanent casing. Uh. Even for debonding, we don't use, it's too expensive, okay? The, the, the reason why we need to reduce the, 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 the diameter is because of this thing. Okay? The, because of whether the, the deformation. I have not even talked on how do we do a performance checks on the ball part. Okay? That will probably be in my third lecture that I'm going to do. Okay? So designers should consider workmanship and execution condition in the design of the part. Right? So for those who people who have not seen ball part, how it's been done, this is a... It's a diagram for you to see. Okay, you can see. Now, real practical example. This is, I cannot tell you the location. This is many years back. This is my first uh, QP Joe project. Okay, first QP Joe project. It's, uh, it's a single tower block. It's a single tower block, more than 30 story. Very luxurious uh, condo. The blue color boreholes are the existing borehole before I was on board. Okay. And the yellow, the four yellow boreholes are the addition borehole that I call for. Why you notice the tower block is here? You notice the blue color boreholes are actually uh, not within the tower block. Anybody want to guess? I think you all don't have time. You all also feel tired, right? But 
this is the most important. The reason why they do it because at that time the existing building was not demolished. So the consultant, original consultant, do the borehole just on the fringe of the existing building. Even though he never touched on the main power block. Okay? Even though it never touched on the main power block. Gerardo Pitaro, you, you sound very familiar. Okay. So you they never do. So when I was on board, I said, hey, we better have a more representative condition. So I start to do call in the in the tower block and also out in the other loaded area. And you and you see the blue line, right? This blue line is actually the zoning. Zoning, okay, for those practical design, you know, right? Uh, we zone the site such that we, we will decide this zone, what is the representative borehole we use for design. And you notice how I zone, I zone very complicated, right? Yeah. Very complicated, you see how I zone? This, this main tower block, this zone uh, is covered by, so big area is covered by this borehole. Now, sir, day, when I check, I have checked more than 10 projects every year. I see the way they zone. Wow, they zone the ground as if uh, the zone, the borehole condition will follow according to their zone. Okay? They ideally zone the site like a grid and idealistically assume the ground will also behave like a grid. This is very dangerous. Uh. Actually, the zoning part is the most difficult thing part and very difficult to do. Okay? Now, how do you classify different zones? I don't have time to cover here. But I just want to highlight to all of y'all who are doing design in the design office, you better pay attention how you classify the zone. Okay, it's not so simple. Okay, I cannot have time to cover here. Probably I will have to do another lecture to tell you how to do this thing. Oh, yeah, there are many things to consider, okay? Now, the actual soil condition may be more complicated than what you think. You look at here, this, this soil profile. They thought there's a rock. The rock here is very high here. Okay, you see the red part is a, the red color is a rock. But in between the rock, there's no rock. There's a deep valley below. If your design based on only rock forgetting that the piles might reach the rock, well, I tell you, in this project, the piling conductor will go bankrupt because you can never find the rock. You see here, he can never find out. The rock probably go much deeper than what is being shown here. Okay, so real life problems are, these are real life. Many piling conductors, when they see rock formation, any rock piles, rock socketed piles, you know, they are, well, I tell you, they almost, every night they cannot sleep, I tell you. If they see the consultant, they know, don't know how to do one, uh, uh, they even more worried. Okay? Now I'll give you one example, uh, one example, this is a real example. Let's take, for example, this is a, uh, this one borehole, okay? This is the, the pulse is a two pulse group. This pulse is an 800 mm diameter. This is a standard notes. Okay, the parameters already designated by the consultant is 2.5 N for soil. Okay, for soil. Huh? G5, G4, G3, anything less than 100 is 2.5 N less than 250. For G2 better, G2, or that means it's rock, the rock friction is 400. And for M bearing, it's not more than 6,000. For the rock, it's not more than 8,000. Now, this is what you have now. Huh? This is what the structure consultant give to you now. The load, okay? He will give you the load. Huh? Where's the load? Uh, the load is here. Okay, the C1 load is 6152, 615 ton. The C2 load is 472 ton. So there's a C1 load, the design combi one load. Action, sorry, I should use the word action. This is the action. Uh, this is already the design action, not the characteristic action, uh, design action. Now, combi one, uh, combi one, the model factor is 1.35. Uh. What you need to do is you, the, the resistant, uh, the resistant, the design resistant, RST stands for design resistant, shaft design resistant, is 2.5N for combi one, is 2.5N divided by R4, which is one, and divided by the model factor. Okay, this thing cannot be more than 250. The end bearing here cannot measure 6,000. The end measure 6,000. So, 
it, it will not because the n maximum is 100. So 6,000 divided by 1.35 can never exceed 100. Likewise, this one also can never exceed 450. For the rock, right, same thing. You will not exceed 400. You always 296 and 5926. Okay, so this is actually uh, how you do the design. Huh? Likewise, you calculate for, for combi 2. Now you have a you have a R4 factor which is more than one. That means your resistance is lesser, your, your M bearing also lesser accordingly. Now, one more criteria required by BCA is that you need to check the characteristic sharp resistance should not be less than 1.3 times the characteristic load. If you can recall, this is similar to CP4, that we always do a friction check only, which is whereby the friction divided by 1.5 must be higher than the allowable load. So we need to check, we need to get the characteristic load. Like remember the what you I show you previously, the information given to you, these two are the design action. They are not the characteristic action. Huh? So you need to find out the characteristic action. Usually you get from the structural consultant, they will give it to you. So this is the thing, okay? This is the thing. You need to check the friction. Now for LTA CDC requirement, right? They you instead of 1.3, they use 1.5. They follow the CP4, but they use the EC7 def definition. Okay. Now, how do we go about? What is the purpose of ignoring the M bearing in this check? This question I keep asking, this is the third time, right? Why? Same thing, uh, because of workmanship. You will know that the ball power M bearing is very difficult to maintain and difficult to achieve. Even you can achieve for a few power, you may not achieve for all the pulse. So that's the reason why you need to, uh, we ignore. This is additional criteria. That means we based on friction only. Remember the first question I asked? What is the common pulse? M bearing, friction, or, or M bearing plus friction. Later you will see, uh, the checking will tell you which one is governing. 